Have you ever walked through your favorite mall and noticed how many stores are closed? You're not alone. In the last decade, more than 12,000 stores in the US have shut down. That's more than double the number of closures just a few years ago. Even big names like JC Penney and Toys, R, S have faced the axe. But it's not just the giants that are struggling, small businesses are feeling the heat, too. Did you know that over 80% of small business owners believe their stores won't survive the next five years without major changes? The truth is, brick and mortar stores are in trouble, and many entrepreneurs are still in denial. As online shopping becomes the norm, many small businesses are being left behind, and the gap keeps growing wider. So, what's really happening? Why are so many physical stores failing? In this video, we'll dive deep into the hidden cracks that are causing this collapse. We'll explore how technology is reshaping the retail landscape, why foot traffic is a myth, and what successful small businesses are doing to adapt. Get ready to uncover the shocking truths behind the decline of brick-and-mortar businesses and discover the smart strategies you can use to thrive in today's digital first world. You won't want to miss it. Chapter 1. The Hidden Cracks. Why brick-and-mortar is failing you might not see it right away, but the cracks in the brick-and-mortar model have been growing for a while. One of the main reasons is simple. People's buying habits have changed. According to Statista, over 2.14 billion people globally are now shopping online, and this number is only climbing. It's clear that consumer behavior is no longer tied to physical stores. The convenience of clicking a button has taken over. As a small business owner, you can't rely on people just walking into your shop anymore. But it's not just consumer behavior. Rising overhead costs are eating into profits, making it hard for small stores to stay afloat. Rent, utilities, and even the cost of keeping inventory on hand can quickly add up. According to the National Retail Federation, brick-and-mortar businesses saw a 30% increase in fixed costs over the past decade. These costs put immense pressure on small businesses, forcing them to rethink their strategy. Here's an interesting fact. According to the book Retail Seismic Shift by Michael Dart, 50% of all retail growth in the last five years has come from companies without any physical presence. This says a lot about where things are headed. If you're not evolving, you're being left behind. Chapter 2. Tech Tsunami. The rise of digital-only small businesses now, let's talk about the wave of technology that's taking over. Digital-first businesses are skyrocketing in popularity, and for a good reason. The flexibility and reach you get from an online presence are massive. You can sell to anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Contrast this with the brick-and-mortar model, where you're limited by geography and working hours. The tools available for small businesses today are game-changers. Platforms like Shopify or Etsy allow entrepreneurs to set up shop online in minutes. In 2023, Shopify's merchants generated over $444 billion in sales, and a significant portion of these merchants are small business owners. This proves that digital-first businesses aren't just for big corporations, small businesses are thriving too. Moreover, automation tools are making it easier than ever to manage tasks like customer service, inventory, and marketing. For instance, using chatbots can cut customer service costs by up to 30%, according to IBM. Imagine answering customer inquiries 24-7 without having to hire someone. This is how small businesses are staying lean and competitive. In his book The Lean Startup, Eric Rise talks about the importance of validated learning, which means constantly experimenting with your business model. Online businesses allow you to test new ideas quickly, without the same costs tied to physical stores. Small businesses that are succeeding today understand the value of agility in this tech-driven environment. Chapter 3. The Ghost Town Effect. Why foot traffic is a myth many entrepreneurs have been sold the idea that foot traffic is king. Get people into the store, and sales will follow, right? Not anymore. The reality is, relying on foot traffic today is like waiting for rain in the desert. According to a study by PwC, 90% of shoppers now start their buying journey online, even if they eventually purchase in-store. This means if you don't have an online presence, you're invisible to most customers. Here's the kicker. Even malls, which were once the hub of consumer activity, are turning into ghost towns. Retail vacancy rates in the US hit a 10-year high of 7.8% in 2022, according to CoStar. 
people just aren't walking into stores like they used to. That's why savvy small business owners are focusing on building an online-first strategy. One approach is creating content that drives traffic to your website. This could be through SEO, search engine optimization, social media marketing, or even email campaigns. According to HubSpot, businesses that blog receive 55% more website visitors than those that don't. That's a massive difference in potential customers. On top of that, omni-channel strategies are proving effective. This means combining online and offline experiences in a way that benefits your business. For instance, allowing customers to browse online but pick up in-store, or offering in-store events that complement your online promotions. As the Harvard Business Review reports, 73% of consumers use multiple channels before making a purchase. If you're only relying on foot traffic, you're missing out on three quarters of your potential customer base. The takeaway? Small businesses can no longer afford to depend on foot traffic alone. The modern customer journey is diverse and often starts online. To succeed, you need to show up where your customers are looking. If you're finding this information helpful, don't forget to subscribe. Join our community for more insights and tips to grow your small business in today's digital age. Chapter 4. Agility versus Stagnation. How small businesses can pivot fast The key to surviving in today's business world is agility. Small businesses have a big advantage over larger ones here. They can pivot quickly when trends change. This isn't just about changing your product line. It's about adapting to the market's needs, sometimes at the drop of a hat. Think about it. When the pandemic hit, some of the most successful small businesses were those that shifted their model overnight. A local brewery that started delivering to homes, or a gym that quickly offered virtual classes, are perfect examples. According to The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton Christensen, the companies that survive disruption are the ones that are willing to evolve before they're forced to. A small business owner can't afford to stick to the same routine just because it worked a few years ago. They have to be ready to change direction. Take a lesson from companies like Warby Parker, which disrupted the eyewear industry by offering a home try-on program. Small businesses can apply this thinking. Could you offer a hybrid online and in-person experience? Could your services be delivered digitally? By staying nimble and keeping an eye on what consumers want, small businesses have the chance to thrive where bigger companies might get stuck. Agility also means keeping operations lean. Many successful small businesses use freelancers or part-time workers to scale up or down depending on demand. According to Upwork, 36% of the U.S. workforce freelances, and more businesses are tapping into this flexible workforce. By not locking into big contracts or long-term hires, small businesses can keep their costs low and adapt quickly. Chapter 5. The Reinvention Formula. Experiences over products If you're still holding onto a brick-and-mortar presence, one way to stand out is to offer something more than just products. Experiences are becoming a crucial part of the modern retail strategy. People want something they can't get online. They want to connect, engage, and be part of a community. A simple product on a shelf doesn't cut it anymore. According to a report from Eventbrite, 78% of millennials would rather spend money on experiences than on physical products. That's a huge shift and it's why some small businesses are thriving by focusing on experiences. Think of a cafe that hosts live music or a bookstore with author events. These businesses create a unique atmosphere that encourages customers to come back, not just to buy something but to enjoy the experience. Take Apple, for example. Sure, they sell products, but their stores are designed to be interactive spaces where people can try out new technology, take workshops, or get free advice from experts. You don't have to be a tech giant to offer something similar. A local cooking store could offer classes, or a fitness studio could host wellness events. These in-person experiences add value that an online store can't replicate. As the collapse of brick-and-mortar businesses continues, small business owners have a choice. They can either cling to old methods or embrace the new tools and strategies that will help them succeed. By staying agile, offering unique experiences, and building a strong digital presence, entrepreneurs can not only survive but thrive in this ever-changing landscape. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more insights and tips on navigating the small business world.